everybody, it's Travis Pagan Scholar. Um, this is kind of a haul video, sort of. It's more of a show and tell. Um, you'll have to excuse my voice. I think I'm coming down with something. So I'm actually kind of a collector of what can only be termed objet d'art. And it's this thing that I like to collect whenever I see them. Uh, I am a collector of obelisks and orbs, spheres, things like that. Uh, I usually frequent Home Goods or um, Ross, TJ Maxx, places like that. And usually, um, at least once every three or four months, I'll, I'll find another one. So I've been collecting them, and I figured it would be fun to show you. Uh, Marshall, my boyfriend, likes to joke that one day I'll have a, an obelisk garden. <laughs> and I, you know what, I'm actually totally okay with that idea. So I've been collecting them, growing them, and one day I will have a garden of obelisks. So <laughs> how is this relevant at all to my channel, Pagan Scholar? I really enjoy obelisks and these orb sculptures because I feel like they're representations of the Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. Um, they are really, I don't want to say base, but they're very uh, obvious and old metaphors for, well, I mean, the phallus and the womb. Um, and as I'm showing you these, these obelisks that I have, uh, I figured we could have that kind of conversation as well about what, how does gender intersect our, our symbolism and how does that play out in our religious practices? Because as we all know, just because you're a man doesn't necessarily mean you have a phallus and just because you're a woman doesn't necessarily mean you have a womb or a uterus or a vagina. Um, the metaphorical landscape of these, of these uh, symbols are changing and I think that it's Yes, it's, it's interesting, but it's also important that we pay respect to that and that we know what we're talking about when we talk about them. But basically, uh, this is my primary altar, kind of. Um, it's very basic, very simple. I've got this. This is just marble of some sort. I'm pretty sure this was a bookend. <laughs> and, um, and I saw it and I thought it was really beautiful. Uh, I've got some snow quartz beads that I put on it. But I try to keep this very plain, very simple. This thing that it's sitting on is a marble book. Yeah, basically it's, I keep it plain, I keep it simple, and this is my altar to uh, Theos Agnostici, um, the, the, the unknown god, the, the god that is without a name, and uh, it's where we get the word agnostic. Um, so this is just sort of my my main place where I just like, I, I try to keep it as bare and vacant as possible and that's just kind of what I do. This is sort of just my, my default idea. I do like to keep the book on there as well just because it's something poetic about a book that can't be opened <laughs> and um, secrets, you know, things that can never be told, this idea that some things we'll never actually figure out. And so that is my, this is where it all started. <laughs> and from there, um, I have collected numerous ones. This one is actually pretty new, this guy. He's just some sort of marble. Uh, and it's, it's a fun, simple, small point. I try to pair every time I get an obelisk with a orb for balance and I, I couldn't find one for this, uh, but this is pretty close. It's actually just, it's, it's hefty. <laughs> and um, there was not a price tag on this. And I was really nice to the, to the guy working. I was like, hey, I hate to be that customer. Could you find out how much this is? And I think he, he cut me a deal because he said this was $2 and normally they're like 14. So. So yeah, these actually stay and live in my bathroom. <laughs> um, also, what lives in my bathroom, because there's nowhere else to put it, this fucking behemoth. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's gargantuan, it's gigantic, and it's the largest 
heaviest obelisk that I have. Um, I just really loved the, the lines in it. It was a deal that I couldn't pass up. Um, yeah, it's a little bit crooked, but, but it's okay. Um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pretty mighty. Um, it's, it kind of exudes this, this masculinity uh, that I, I mean, as a gay man, um, I'm drawn to masculinity. Not the toxic kind, but, um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm gay. and I wouldn't necessarily call this an orb. I mean, it is. And it's fairly new. And if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this. But, yes, I have a crystal ball now. <laughs> and I just thought it was really fun and kitschy to have. Uh, I hold it in this, I think it was originally an incense burner or something like that. Um, I picked it up in a secondhand shop and it made me bleed, so I figured it was mine uh, that, I, that I needed to take it home. It came with a stand, uh, the, the crystal ball that is, and I got this at Earthbound. I think it was like, I, I spent a lot of money on it. I spent like $35 on a piece of glass, uh, but it came with the stand and as I like put it in here, I also put a mirror underneath it. So that way it all is kind of this really neat, groovy, super duper weird reflection going on. So yeah, I've thought about getting like a clear obelisk. I've seen them, they're, they're just basically crystal points, uh, but they always look kind of I don't know, just like weird 90s hotel lobby stuff. I don't, I, I don't really go for that. In the same vein as the crystal ball, I have these two beautiful, well, one, this one's mine, this is Marshall's, selenite spheres. Aren't they just like so magical the way that light moves through them and around them? And anyways, um, but yeah, I got these from Grove and Grotto, which is a shop they have an online presence as well. You should go check them out. Um, run by my two friends, Sarah and Michelle. It's Michelle's shop. <laughs> and so, yeah, beautiful light catching pieces. Um, yeah. <laughs> Finally, I've got my Onyx and my Onyx, I love it. I think it's beautiful. So, this sphere, it, it has a flat spot, so it actually sits on a table. Um, I mean, look at that, it's like an eye, <laughs> you know? It's like Jupiter or something, Sauron. Most people think that onyx is black, but actually black onyx is dyed. And I have a matching, like exactly matching uh, obelisk for it. So this is, what I think to be like my prettiest one that I've got. And it's just the lines, this camera doesn't do justice for it. It's just, ah, uh, it's so pretty and it's the perfect weight. Um, it's smooth, it's been polished and it's really, really pretty. But today, the reason why I'm making this video is because I found its um, brother, its cousin, I don't know, and it is unpolished. So, you can see this, <laughs> like, isn't that neat? Like, half of it is polished where, like, that's a, that's a plane, and that's a plane, but, like, there's all these, like, broken bits, and it's not polished, and it's so cool, very, like, something out of H.P. Lovecraft, you know, and it's just this really beautiful, neat piece, and I dig it so much. This is, this is the newest addition to my growing obelisk garden, um, and I'm gonna lay it all out on my table for you to see. I didn't actually talk a lot about the intersection of symbols and metaphor and gender, um, but basically I feel like that's kind of the newest thing for our community to start examining and unpacking and, and um, figuring out where we stand in this conversation. I know I myself have said uh, transphobic things um, un unknowingly, unwittingly, and 
And I apologize for that. And I want to start this conversation to figure out what we do with our symbols that we've always taken to mean like, okay, well an obelisk, it's masculine, it's, it's the phallus, it's the penis, you know. Um, so what does that mean whenever we remove the idea that it's automatically going to be gendered? I mean, I, I feel like there's a lot to unpack and there's a lot of things that as, as a cis male, as a person who feels comfortable with the body that they're born into, um, I, I don't want to speak a lot on that because I know that I get it wrong often and I just don't want to do that. I don't want to be wrong, you know, and I want to listen to that conversation to to those people who can speak up from a place of, of being there and knowing what they're talking about. So um, ultimately, this was an opportunity to show off all of the rocks that I buy <laughs> and uh, to ask you guys, what are, what are your thoughts on these changing metaphors, these changing ideas, and if you have any neat rocks that you like to, to talk about. So, anyways, I'm going to uh, hop off the camera now. My voice is slowly, slowly dying. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. A like is appreciated, a subscription even more so. And as always, merry meet, merry part, and merry meet again. Thank you.